Good morning, my sister and brother, Bird Worry here. I trust that you are doing well. Yes, I know I am early. I just got a break from my class. They gave us 15 minutes. And my goodness, is I mean, uh, this is the midwife that's doing her session. And it is a wealth of information. And I do not want to miss anything. And she is just giving us all this wealth of information, my sister and brother. So I decided to come now and don't want to do it later. So here we are. So let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Did I ask you if you were doing well this morning? Trusting that you are well, my sister and brother. Well, let us pray. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Thank you, Father God, so much for calming and for the wind that is blowing through Central Valley, Father God. You are uh, it's not so hot, Father God, and it's just perfect. So, Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right now, Father God, I ask you that you would decrease me, Father God, so that you will be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, Aiko and the cat over there, and Aiko's on the ground, and she has her, her uh, she's laying on her back. So, I guess she's having a good time in the dirt. So, let us get, in, get into the Seeking Harmony. It says, let nothing be done to strife and vain glory, but in the lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. This is coming from Philippians 2, verses 3. Philippians 2, verses 3. Father God, as we go into this topic, seeking harmony, Father God, allow us to receive a, a message, receive a blessing from this message today. I thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And it stayed here. God's servants are to labor in perfect harmony. Contention brings alienation and strife and discord. I am instructed that our churches have no need to spend their time in strife. When a spirit of contention struggles for the supremacy, call a halt and make things right. Else Christ will come quickly and will remove your candlestick out of its place. Let an earnest work of repentance be done. Let the Spirit of God search through minds and heart and cleanse away all that hindered the needed reformation. Until this is done, God cannot bestow on us his power and grace. And while we are without his power and grace, men will stumble and fall and will not know at what they stumble. The love of Christ is the bond that is to unite believers heart to heart and mind to mind. Let me repeat this. The love of Christ is the bond that is to unite believers heart to heart and mind to mind. The blood of Christ has been shed for the whole human family. None need be lost. Those who are lost will perish because they choose to forfeit an eternity of bliss for the satisfaction of having their own way. This was Satan's choice, and today his works and his kingdom testify to the character of his choice. The crimes and the misery that fill our world, the horrible murders that are of daily occurrence, are the fruits of man's submission to Satan's principles. My brethren, read the book of Revelation from beginning to end and ask yourself whether you might not better spend less time in strife and contention and begin to think of how fast we are approaching the last great crisis. Those who seek to make it appear that there is no special meaning attached to judgment that the Lord is now sending upon earth will soon be forced to understand that which now they do not choose to understand. Let me repeat the last paragraph, that it was a lengthy. It says, those who seek to make it appear that there is no special meaning attached to the judgment that the Lord is now sending upon the earth will soon be forced to understand that which now they do not choose to understand. So that concludes my topic, my sister, my brother, seeking harmony, seeking harmony. Okay, let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you. Thank you, Father God, for this message, Father God. Allow us, to, Father God, to continue to seek harmony in our churches as well as in our homes, Father God. 
Father God, we ask you, Father God, that you will open our hearts and mind to receive this information, Father God. So, so far, Father God, ask you if to search us and see whether if there's anything in us that is not of you, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to wash us and make us whiter than snow. Once you've done that, Father God, we give you permission to use us, to mold us, Father God, to give us the power and the strength that we need in these last days, Father God, to stand for the truth. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for being a merciful God, your God that you sit high, you look low, Father God, and you have already dispatched angels, Father God, to answer our prayer. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you. So, Father God, I thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So let me give you a little bit snippet of what I learned this morning. Not that we don't know it, but I believe it's just a ref a refresh a refresher so one of the things that she talks about you know we all know that the husband is at the top right and then the wife and then the children you see the order husband wife children husband wife children it's not children and then the wife and then the husband at the bottom no 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 the husband is the priest and then you got the wife and then you have the children okay in that order that's god's order right and but society tells us that we need to change the order and sometimes we think that we know better than what god knows and we always mess things up so one of the other things that she point out to us is like when your child is 18 they say okay i can't wait till my child get 18 and so they can just go and leave the house no my sister brother she said that it's not right for us to do that because even though they're 18 according to the world standard but we need to go back as christian as ambassadors for christ look at the bible what does the bible say when was it that christ left home he was 30. What about Isaac? Isaac was uh, 40 when he got married, right? So we got to look at the individuals in the Bible. Because a child is 18, they still still need to be in the home because, but you know, most 18 year old, uh, they know, they think they know so much, you know, and they, they think that, oh, I can go out and do my own thing, not realizing they still have to give an account to God because in your home, you have your different rules on, and uh, your rules and regulation. And most of them want to break the rules and things like that. And that God is not pleased with that. So I understand why some parents say, well, you know, when she get 18, I can't wait. Or when he get 18, I can't wait. But that is not according to the Bible. So we need to examine why you're pushing that child out of your home at 18. Okay, so, you know, but then they have to make the decision as well. So just be mindful of that. Child don't need to be out of your home when they're 18. That is not, that is not a good thing. And then, then the other thing she talks about, because we are so disrespectful, you know, us as parents, we are very disrespectful. And the things that we have done, you know, when God gave us more information, we have changed. But what about the, the, uh, the mistakes that we had fall into so we need to go ahead and ask the lord to forgive us and then also go to that child and uh, ask them um, to forgive you as well so be you know because remember we got to have peace no contention then she stated another thing as women 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 she said i and i challenge you she says call your husband my lord mm my lord and then she gave you the reasons why but think about it if your husband is your priest i'm talking about husband i am not talking about living relationship or we call it uh, back in the day shacking i am not talking about those relationships okay i'm talking about the relationship that i uh, you state I, that i married that he was willing to lay his life on the line for you that man that say you know would you uh would you like uh, i would like you to be my wife you know that one that you to say i would like to be my wife that one, so I mean to say that man had laid down his life for you. So that is the one I'm talking about, and not the ones that people are just shacking. I am not talking about those relationships. I am talking about a man that laid down his life for his family. One that said, yes, I want to marry you until death do us part. That is the relationship I'm referring to. So those are the men you call Lord, my Lord, and see what happens in your relationship. Because what it does when you say my Lord, it gives a man a different perspective of his relationship with you. Mm. So that is the nugget. So let me go back because I know my class has already started. So I already prayed. So my sister, brother, this is Burdell Warrior. Uh, you can follow me at BurdellWarrior.com. You can also go over to YouTube as well, and you'll find uh, a wealth of information, a wealth of information there for your whole entire family. So share, 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 share. And before I go, let us do the four hugs, four hugs for survival. So here we go. 
One, two, three, one more. Four. Thank you, my sister and brother. I love you. I appreciate you. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.